I'm going to do a quick look at the Dilutions Creative Journal. It's from rangerinc.com and it just seemed to me it was easier to make a quick little video of this and show you because description might confuse you. It's an unusually shaped and covered journal. It has a strap on it that you can use to keep the whole book shut. Um, this is in uh, the opposite mode right now, but it's got a folded edge here and what you have is a stiff cover with a pocket unattached at the spine here and a fabric spine on a sewn signature book glued to the covers. So this always is going to flop open. And my main problem with this journal is that I can't stand and hold this and sketch. Even the smaller ones, and it comes in other sizes. It comes in a square and it comes in a small journal that's like five by eight. I can't stand and hold them so, and then sketch at the same time, which is a big drawback for me because I like to go out and sketch from life while I'm standing. So I wanted you to be able to see this. If this is going to be a problem for you, then this might not be the journal for you. What I did is I actually cut this away. So it's no longer here. But the problem is you can't take the back part of this off because this thin cardstock cover is heavily laminated to the back here. So this little bit of cardstock here and then a big, big bit of chipboard or whatever this cover is made of. Okay, and I tried to get this off. I started to try and get it off here and I realized I was taking a lot of the chipboard with me. So I stopped that and I just used it as is. Now, that allowed me to open it and hold it while sketching, but not have to worry with the flapping cover. Okay? So if that's something that you don't mind doing and adapting, then you can do that. I have another photo that I'll show you that actually shows how, as you use this, the um, uh, spine starts to go convex. That's not unusual in a journal that's constructed like this with a fabric spine and no support on the back, and it's not a deal breaker. Inside, what's really sad about this is that um, what's inside is some really lovely cardstock, which is a cream color. And the thing about it is the book opens flat. So for those people who like everything to open flat, this is one of the, the best journals I've ever seen for construction that opens totally flat. That's great. And it has this lovely, thick, heavyweight cardstock. So for people who like to do mixed media or they like to do buildup of materials, maybe a lot of heavy collage, this is a good surface to work on for that. It's a very smooth surface, so if you like to work with pen and ink and have nice smooth line, it's a good surface for that. I sh I'll show you some additional examples besides the ones I'm just going to flip to right now. I'll show you some other examples as, as stills that have been scanned. This is marker, acrylic marker. I put this in here because um, there's some gouache here and you'll see later that there's an issue with gouache in this particular book on this kind of paper or a potential for an issue. Um, this is one of the best papers I found for working with acrylic marker. So if you work with acrylic marker uh, and the other issues about this book don't bother you, this would be perhaps a good choice for you. Even it's, it's a smooth paper, but you can still do color pencil stuff on it. If you look at this page, this is one of my usual Pentel brush pens. And one of the things that happened over time is that it started to rub off on the opposite side. On some pages, this might not be noticeable, but on this particular page, it is noticeable because there's no other art there. So if that bothers you, it happens on a lot of different papers but I found that this paper was particularly prone to that if you have a lot of negative space. And that's not from a lot of pressure on the other side. 
I don't have a lot of pressure when I'm working on this page coming down here. I'm not rubbing it with colored pencils or anything like that. Um, I work with mostly media that's got very light pressure on it. So it's just from the opening and closing of the book and the pages rubbing together. You can do some fun things with uh, water-soluble pen and ink, and I'll show you some others in stills. And that's because this is such a smooth paper. So if that's the way that you like to use your paper, again, this might be a good choice. But for me, the big drawback is this awkward cover that has this big fold-out front cover. And, oh, the other thing is it's, even when you take the cover off, this must weigh it feels like it weighs a couple pounds. It weighs more than my iPad Pro, okay? It, 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 well, at least it seems like it does, maybe because it's awkward or whatever, but it, it's heavy. And um, so I actually was so unhappy about the cover, I uh, wrote to the woman who created the books and um, asked if it was possible to just get the insert. That way I wouldn't have to have a double cover on the back and I wouldn't have to razor that front cover off. But she said, nope, the only way that they're available, even not even an option to buy in bulk. Like if I wanted, you know, a thousand of these, um, they weren't going to sell them that way. They're only going to sell them this way. And I understand that, but I just thought it might be something worth checking into. So that's a scoop. It's an unusual book. For some people, it might be just the thing. And for other people, there might be some deal breakers that make it non-useful.